I know you're 11. I'm going to go through some of the questions from 11.2 on Locus. I'm not going to do all of them. And my suggestion to you is that when you, if you have had trouble and you've looked at an example, go away and have another go at the questions before you come back and have another look at how I'd go through them. So I'm going to start with question 10. Uh, we did the other ones in class. So remember, you're only meant to do the even questions. So question 10. Now, if we look at question 10, it says, find the equation of the locus of a point that moves so that it is equidistant from the point 0, 5 and the line Michaels minus 5. Well, because I want to represent this on the Cartesian number plane, and I want to use algebra to express this, I'm going to let P, X, Y satisfy the conditions of the locus. And that means I can now use Descartes' number plane to express this locus. So I'll just quickly draw up a number plane. And I'll put in the things that I know. And I've got the line y equals minus 5. And I've got this point up here, which is 0 and 5. And the path being traced out is equidistant between those two. So it's pretty obvious I've got one point there, which is just a straight line midpoint. But I'll have a point here, and here, and here, and here, and here. And this is the point I'm going to call PXY. Now we're lucky because we already know that it's going to be a parabola. And this distance has got to equal this distance. They've got to be the same. Finding the distance P to that point. Now I'm going to label that point. I'm going to label it A. So finding the distance PA is pretty easy. I'm just going to use my distance formula. But finding the distance between P and this line Y equals minus 5, and that presents us with a little bit of a problem. Now I could use a perpendicular distance formula. But it's pretty obvious that because y, minus, y equals minus 5 is a horizontal line, the distance is just going to be the subtraction of the y values. So that distance is just going to be y minus minus 5, which is y plus 5. Okay. So now I've got that in play. Let's go and see if we can do the algebra that will give us a Cartesian representation of this locus, which we know is going to be a parabola because we're aware of that condition, point and line. So what do we know? PA equals the perpendicular distance from P to the line Y equals minus 5. So PA is the square root of x minus 0 all squared plus y minus 5 all squared. And we've already established that the perpendicular distance is y plus 5. Well, we'll square both sides. And that'll give me, well, x minus 0 is x. So that gives me x squared. And y minus 5 all squared equals y plus 5 all squared, because we squared both sides. And that will give me x squared plus y squared minus 10y plus 25 equals y squared plus 10y plus 25. And if I cancel out those, because they're going to uh, cancel themselves out when I subtract y squared from both sides and I subtract 25 from both sides and I bring that 20 that 10 y over I'll get x squared minus 20 y equals 0 which is the equation of the locus and is a parabola if I wanted to write it as y equals I get y equals 1 on 20 
x squared. And we know that from our graphing days that that is a very flat parabola, 1 20th x squared. And that's a solution to question 10. Let's move on and have a look at question 14. Find the equation of the locus of the point PXY that moves so that the line PA is perpendicular to PB, where A is 1, negative 3, and B is 4 and 5. So let's have a look at 14. I'm not going to write let PXY satisfy the conditions of the locus. It's already written in the question. And also I'm going to take that as red now for these questions from now on. So PA is perpendicular to PB. Therefore, the gradient PA times the gradient PB must equal minus 1. And P is XY. A is 1, negative 3. And B is 4, 5. Okay, so the gradient formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm just going to employ that. So y minus minus 3, and this is pa, is x minus 1. That's a gradient of pa. The gradient of PB is Y minus 5 on X minus 4. And this all equals negative 1. All right, well, let's tidy that up a bit. Y plus 3 on X minus 1 times Y minus 5 on X minus 4. And that equals minus 1. Well, we'll do the top. Remember... We're multiplying the whole thing, so you should put brackets or parentheses around them. So the top's going to be y squared plus 3y minus 5y minus 15. And on the bottom, I'm going to get x squared minus x minus 4x plus 4. And that all equals minus 1. So that's y squared minus, oh, well, that's a terrible squared. y squared minus 2y minus 15 equals x squared minus 5x plus 4, and that equals minus 1. Then I multiply the denominator across, so I'm going to get y squared minus 2y minus 15 equals minus x squared plus 5x minus 4. And now I'm going to add it all to the left-hand side. So I'm going to get x squared minus 5x plus y squared minus 2y minus 11. And that all equals 0. And that's the answer that Margaret stops at with question 14, I'm pretty sure. But I don't think that's good enough. It looks very much like something that you should already know. And that is, it's a circle. This is a circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to find that circle, which is going to become part of our work next lesson. I'm going to take that 11 over the other side. So when I do that, that becomes plus 11. And you'll notice that I've got big gaps at the end. That's because I'm now going to complete the square for this bit and this bit. Now, to complete the square for the y bit is pretty easy. I go a half the coefficient of y, 1, square it, and add it. So half of 1, half of 2 is 1, 1 squared, I'm going to add 1. And now I've got a perfect square with the y's, and I've got to add 1 over to here because I've got to add 1 to both sides. Halving and squaring the coefficient of x is difficult because it's a fraction. Well, no, not really. A half of 5 is 5 on 2. 
And if I square 5 on 2, that gives me 25 on 4. And I add 25 on 4 over here. So I haven't changed any of the equation, but it allows me to rewrite it now. So this is x minus 5 on 2 all squared. And this is y minus 1 all squared. And this is 11 plus 1 is 12. 25 on 4 is 6 and a quarter. All right, 6 and a quarter. So 12 plus 6 and a quarter, that's 18 and a quarter. So this is a circle with a center at 5 on 2 and 1 and a radius equal to the square root of 18 and a quarter, which is 4 and a bit. Now, you didn't need to do that. You could have stopped here at x squared minus 5x plus y squared minus 2y minus 11 equals 0. And that's fine for this exercise. But doing that next step is what we're going to be doing the lesson after this. Okay. Question 20. Find the equation of the locus of a point that moves so that its distance from the line 12x minus 5y minus 1 is always one unit. Well, again, for question 20, I'm not going to write, I'm going to take it as read that PXY satisfies the condition of the locus. It's already been written into the question, but I am going to draw it. Now, if I look at it, the question says that we've got 12x minus 5y minus 1 equals 0. Now remember, knowing what this thing is going to look like is going to help you when you do your algebra. So I'm going to write that as 5y equals 12x minus 1 and divide by the 5. y equals... Hmm, 12 on 5x minus 1 fifth, divide both by. So now I know that this is a positive line that goes through minus a fifth. So it's going to go through here. And it's 2 and 2 fifths. So it's reasonably steep, probably steeper than that. And that's the equation of the line that we've got. And what we're saying is we want locus that it's always one unit away from that line. Okay. Well, there's a point that's one unit away. And there's another point that's one unit away. And there's another point that's one unit away. If I keep doing these points, I get all these points and I'll get a line. So I know that my answer will be a linear equation. But... I'll also get all these points that are one unit away. So knowing or drawing it on a Cartesian number plane and knowing what you're going to end up with will help you be more accurate, will help you get the right answer. So now I know that I'm going to get two lines and they're going to be parallel. So their gradient has to be 12 on 5. Well, how do we do this? How do we do this algebraically? Remember that this is the point PXY. And that's a line. And I'm lucky because I have the perpendicular distance formula. Remember the perpendicular distance formula is AX plus BY plus C over the square root of a squared plus b squared. So all we have to do is we've got the equation of a line and the point pxy. So all we have to do is go, well, the perpendicular distance is 1, 
That is the condition of the locus. And oh, the distance is one, and we're using perpendicular distance. So we're going to get 12x minus 5y minus 1. That's the equation that we're using. That's the line. And we don't need to sub in x and y because x and y is x and y. And now I start to be a bit more uh, sure of myself because I'm looking at this and going, well, a squared is 12 squared and b squared is 5 squared. I don't need to put in the negative b because I'm squaring it. And I immediately go, well, that's a Pythagorean triad, so that's going to be really cool. So I get 12x minus 5y minus 1 on 13. Multiply the 13 across and I get 13 equals the absolute value of 12x minus 5y minus 1. And I immediately go, now, some students when they get to this stage like to go, oh, I'll just make the minor, I'll make it plus or minus 13. And that will work. But oh, I'd rather you didn't do that. Please don't do that. Absolute value means you take the absolute value of what's inside the absolute value um, brackets. So you really should do that. So 13 equals, now if I take the negative case, minus 12x plus 5y minus 1. And we'll take everything over to the left-hand side. And we get 12x minus 5y plus 14 equals 0. Now if I take the positive case, 13 equals 12x minus 5y minus 1. And if I take, sorry, that should have been plus, so that would have been minus 12. Think back here, that should have been a plus. I'm going to take it over, I get, sorry, plus 12, plus 12. I knew that because I know what the answer is going to be. Anyway, if I bring the 13 over here, I get 0 equals 12x minus 5y minus 14. And you can see they're the same line, just with a distant, different constant. And that makes sense because it's got to be parallel. And we can see the 12 and 5 in there. And we check our answers. So what do we need? Uh, question 20, 12x minus 5y minus 14 equals 0. And 12x minus 5y plus 12 equals 0. So that's question 20. Let's finish up now. Question 24. Given two points, A and B, find the equation of the locus if the gradient PA is twice the gradient PB. So 24, what do we got? PXY, and we'll take it as given that PXY satisfies the condition of the locus. A is 3, negative 2, and B is negative 1, 7. And what's our condition? PA, the gradient PA, and see how I'm talking this out. That's a good way to do it. The gradient PA is twice the gradient PB. And now it's just a case of doing the algebra. Now we know the gradient formula. It's y2 minus y1 on m x2 minus x1. So PA is y minus minus 2 on x minus 3. And that equals 2 times PB, or the gradient of PB, which is y minus 7 on x minus minus 1. So we get y plus 2 on x minus 3 equals 2y minus 14. Notice that I've multiplied the 2 through the top on x plus 1. And now I'm just going to multiply the denominators across. Now, note, I'm going to write these in brackets. So I've got y plus 2 
x plus 1, and I've got 2y minus 14, and x minus 3. And now I'm just going to expand those and collect like terms. So I'm going to get xy plus 2x plus y plus 2. And that's just doing this. No, by that, by that, by that. I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to get 2xy minus 6y minus 14x plus 3 14s. 3 10s, 33 4s, 12, 42. I'm going to bring everything over to the right hand side because I want to have a positive xy. So I take the xy over and I get xy because 2xy minus 1xy. I've got minus 14x and I'm going to minus another 2x and so minus 16x. I've got minus 7y and I've got plus 40. Now that's nothing that you should have seen before. You could look it up on Desmos and see what it is. I'm just going to check the answers. Question 24. xy minus 16x minus 7y plus 40 equals 0. And that's the equation. The Cartesian equation of the representation of the locus. I'm pretty sure that'll end up being a hyperbola. I might be wrong. And there you go. That's the solution to those four questions. So, what do you need to do again? You need to make sure that when you're in an exam, you let PXY, you state that you're letting PXY satisfy the conditions of the locus. It's a good idea in cases to draw them so you know what the answer is going to be. And then it's just a case of applying the algebra and finalising the resulting equation. So good luck with those. And we start circles next lesson.